here we have a new terminal server. This here is a Dell Dell Dimension XPS T5000 with a Pentium 3 and it's running Windows Terminal Server Service Pack 3 I believe. Over here we have a Windows 95 computer. This computer is running a Pentium MMX at, uh, what did it say? Yeah, 233 megahertz. And it has 64 megabytes of RAM. The terminal server actually has 20, 256 megabytes of RAM. Let's go ahead and let's power on the terminal server. Pressed it two times, but it worked. While the terminal server is loading up, let's go ahead and let's power on. Windows 95 computer. The Windows 95 computer is louder than the terminal server, which is kind of surprising to me because I actually never realized how loud this thing is. So that's going to be loading up. Let's go ahead and let's log in into the terminal server. No password set on the admin account. Ooh, ooh. Just logged in into the Windows 95 computer. I'm still very sniffly. I'm very sorry. That's not good. So the first thing I need to do before we get the Windows 95 computer connected to this computer is we need to create a special profile for the Windows 95 computer, which is something I'll do right now. Okay, username, we'll call it PC3 because that's what the computer, the Windows 95 computer is actually, it's a portable PC3. Full name, portable PC3. Description. user profile for the PC3 password the uh, hmm let's just add no password let's change password at next login and user can't change password actually wait and then just leave it be and add. Did it add it? There it is. Okay. So now we can connect the Windows 95 computer to the terminal server. Oh, I just accidentally pressed the power button, I believe. Yep. God damn it! Alright, so the profiles are still there. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up something on the terminal server so we'll be able to see who's on and who isn't. Oh, and yeah, I have to change the name of the actual server after this, or whenever I can. We'll go ahead and connect. But it's not going to do anything. Because we have to re enter in the name for some random reason, and then it'll do it. There we go. So now we're connected. We're going to log in with our 
new account that was just made. PC. And it'll just do its stuff here. And, well, here we go. It has now created its own little profile. So now we have our own little profile for the terminal server when connecting to it. We'll go ahead and uh, stick a little wallpaper on here, just like so. And then that's basically it. We got all their applications here still because they're all shared locally. Over here, as you can see, there is someone on the PC3 account. So right here, it shows the user, the session, the ID, and the state, and then when they got on to the, the account at the specific time. And as you can see, it is totally correct. So that, oh, and it's time to change something very, very wrong on this computer, which I'll have to disconnect the Windows 95 computer from off the terminal server to do. So disconnect. That disconnects the server. I'll load up control panel. And then network. Change. What would be a good name? What would be a good name? Mm. Ooh, I know. Very creative name. Uh, the computer's name is successfully changed to Termos. This change will not take effect until the computer has restarted. Okay, we just close out of this and we restart the computer. Over here, I will go ahead and change the name of what this computer will be connecting to to Termos. And then we're going to try to see if I will be able to connect to the server once the terminal server has actually restarted. Because that is something that I haven't got to try out but I'm kind of curious about. Okay, so the computer, the terminal server is now at his login screen. I'll go ahead and go onto the Windows 95 computer to see if it'll actually connect. Eh. Okay. Let's try typing in the name of it again. So, no is the answer. Let's try logging in on the terminal server as admin. The system log is full. Okay. Alright. So, let's just make sure that our name is Termas. Yeah, Termas. Maybe because it was on the login screen, the Windows 95 computer wasn't able to connect. So, let's try it again. Oh, I see the problem right now. That's not the problem. There we go. So yes, <coughs> connecting to the terminal server when it's on the login screen will not work. You have to make sure that this computer is logged in as admin or something else. So then the connection can actually go through. So now that I know, I know not to restart the computer without having to babysit it and making sure that it, you know, doesn't screw up. And I believe over here, the welcome message did not display, and I, I like the welcome message, so we're gonna make sure that welcome.exe runs. Oh, I spelled welcome incorrectly. There we go. There. Perfect. So, we have the terminal server with its configured uh, user profiles so then that this machine actually has its own profile and not the administrator and there's also there's also the guest profile as well we can go into the guest profile which I'll actually show right now because 
I don't know what's going to happen. So we'll log off. Oh, well then it ends the connection. So we'll connect again and we'll log in as guest. Your account has been disabled. Please use the, please use your system. Please see your system and share. Okay. So since that's disabled, we'll, disa we'll enable it. Not disable it again. We'll enable it here. So, uh, programs, admin tools, and here, guest, and we will do that. Password never expires. This actually has a password. We don't want a password. User cannot change the password, and password never expires. Password will expire. Okay, now let's try logging in as the guest profile on the Windows 95 computer. Again. If you could have, you could have heard the um, terminal server hard drive going off. And you well, there's the guest account. I mean, nothing, nothing else to it. It's just like a brand new account. <laughs> nothing else. So we'll log off. And then we'll connect back in. Make sure that this is set to the PC3. Log in, and then I'll log back out. There we go.